You're good. How's it going, Coach? I'm doing well, thank you. All right? Yep. Cool. So what is it like to be back in Tucson? It's beautiful. You know, how can you beat this? Um, we're practicing, looking at mountains and palm trees as we're working. The, the energy here is incredible. Is from what I remember, you know, the 14 years I was here at the University of Arizona. I'm excited to be part of this. I'm excited about the direction that we are going. Um, after being here two weeks and being two weeks early on off-season program, I certainly feel the energy and I'm excited that we are moving in the right direction. What was that process like uh, when Fish reached out to you and, and came up with the idea of bringing you back here? You know, it was... Uh, because I've done it a little while, and I've been blessed. I, I've, uh, you know, I haven't had to move around much. I've been at the, proud to say, really, and I, I won't call Hawaii because that's home, but really three universities in 42 years, you know, and I have worked in Tucson, Arizona, Austin, Texas, and Palo Alto. So there's been worth, worse stops, I know. But what I know about this this profession is that it's all about the people you're lining up with. And I, I did not know Coach Fish. I've known him through competing against him. But when we sat down and just talked about what's your vision, what are we looking for here, the direction that it's moving in, it's very much what I've been raised on by the man that we've named this practice field on. You know, it's about the team. It's about simplifying things so we can play fast and chase the football. Um, you know, I've known Johnny. Johnny, I know, is a, a front seven, and he's done a great job there. And I've come in to just work with Chuck Cecil and now Jay Rich to help continue to um, be part of us developing a defense that's going to blend together. And uh, I think the staff, J Jay Kafusi, who is I, I've known over the years too, and I got a lot of respect for him as a front seven coach. So. You know, I'm just really excited that every stop I've been from when I was first here with Ellerson and Arnold Jeter and Rich Smith and Johnny Lynn and then going to Texas with Mushchamps and Diaz, you know, been around a lot of good coaches and it's, I continue to grow as a coach here as I'm learning from Coach Nansen and a lot of the younger coaches to the GA. So it's been a positive experience without a doubt. And I, I know where my Chinese restaurants are and all my restaurants. I don't have to go hunting. My wife uh, is right back with her old tennis crew, so it's been a perfect, uh, it's been a perfect blend for us. And so, what goes into your role here? Like, what, how would you define your position? I, I think as I learn the system on how we're canceling gaps and what we're doing on the back end, that I can marry it to some of the things that we've done in the past, um, whether it was here with the swarm or. Uh, when I was at Texas and, and, and at Arizona. So we're kind of blending, you know, what's been done in the past and what I've been done, what I've done in other areas along with Chuck and Jay Rich. I'm just a part, uh, just a piece of the puzzle um, of, of this staff. It seems like you're coaching secondaries, you're coaching special teams, seems like you're kind of coaching everything. Well, you know, we all, I think everybody just kind of pitches in where we're needed here. And that's one of the things I thought um, in this profession, what I know, you just got to put your ego in your back pocket. You know, they're, they're, I've been around, well, I'll say this, I really have not been around staffs that are selfish and looking for their own self-improvement. The, the places I have been, it's about the team, and if you do well, we'll all be successful. Players will become All-Americans and pros. Coaches will move from a position coach to a coordinator to a head coach, and that's what I'm feeling here. Everybody is just kind of pitching in where needed, and... Uh, I think the themes that I've heard from all the great NFL coaches that have been here, they've all talked about the team and being a great teammate, and that doesn't only talk to the players, it also talks to the staff too, that we all have to have our role. And you know, I, I've worn every title you can wear. Uh, I've been associate head coach, assistant head coach, offensive coordinator, defensive coach, special teams coordinator. So titles aren't important, you know, it's just if there's a job, somebody go do it, and that's where we're at. How do you look back on your 14 years at Arizona? What are your, maybe some of your fondest memories? Oh man, well first of all, just the family environment that Dick Tomey built here and gave us an opportunity as coaches to also coach players but still have the opportunity to be involved with our families also. This game can eat you up. At times you can spend more times with other people's children than your own. What Coach Tomey did is gave us an opportunity to be good parents too, which became good models for the players and balancing that. 
and, and teaching more than just X's and O's and trying to get a first down, but also when these guys leave these four walls that they're armed with, you know, because this game is a great laboratory for life. Because everything you learn on the gridiron, put your ego in the back pocket, compete, adversity, get up at 6 a.m. and do that, is what companies are looking for forward. Because now when they leave here, they're going to join another team, you know, in the workforce. But all the things those companies are looking for, they have learned here on the gridiron. And they just transfer it over. That's their new team. And, and they move forward. So those things. But so many great games. I can get into a great game. Today we are talking about somebody give us a chance to play goal line defense. And I, I, I keep tapes all the way back. So I was able to pull out the 1989 game playing against Musk, Bill Musgrave, you know, who's now a coach. And it's one minute left in the game. They hit a screen. It goes down to the f one yard line. Now it's fourth and goal. And we're down there, and we go to fourth and short. Musgrave comes out, bootlegs. Daryl Lewis is in the back, takes it away. When Musgrave's running for the flag, D. Lou knocks it out. The place explodes. I don't know if you guys were there in 1989. I know one guy was there, and the play. So there's so many beating Washington when they're number one in the country, and 16 to three. And I was in Don James' first recruiting class to have Coach James come over and congratulate me on that, and and even. Prior to that, a 1-1-1 one, one, one Arizona team goes to Miami. We're, we have a chance to beat the University of Miami in the Orange Bowl that hadn't been done since Flutie. And we have a great kicker, Steve McLaughlin, who you know, wins, wins the Groza Award the next year. Last play of the game, misses a field goal. Negative situation, right? We go, I'll make it. Uh, I might get emotional on this. And here we are in the, in, in the Orange Bowl locker room. McLaughlin is in the shower, all right, and, and struggling. Freshman Brandon Sanders says, we got one of our own, right? He's in the shower. Dick is getting ready to have his team talk. The whole team gets up, goes in the shower, OK? And we're playing without our starting quarterback and all of that, everybody's just, and we have the meeting in there, and that was the guts right there, of the, in my opinion, of the whole Desert Swarm. The system, Rich Ellerson, who's the creator of the whole thing, we married it from 12-man football to 11-man football. So the system was already, and we went in there, and from there is where we went on the run, and went undefeated from then on out. And then the thing went, but it was just, it's just fun to see how that whole thing, but it was all about the players that loved one another. We competed like heck, but there was true love, you know, and that's so many of those films that I grab from those teams, I take with me to Texas. And so the model of so many of my tapes that I've shared, I have gone to Texas with Arizona players and at Stanford from Arizona players, because this was the guts of so much of my, the guts of my coaching philosophy because of Coach Tony. And how symbolic is it for you to come back here at this point of your career, to come back to a place where you had a lot of success? And what do you make of the direction of the program? The direction is moving in a terrific um, angle right now. That's why I just shared with the players. I appreciate them just letting me jump on this train and go with them. You know, because we've been close. We had a couple tough, had chances, Lost a couple tiebreakers, you know. Was on the number three team in the country, our 98 team. You know, I still I want to find that official that threw the flag on Dennis Northcutt's reverse that ran down to the field there, because that was a national championship team. Okay, um, uh, really, the Holiday Bowl was the national championship game. That was the year that Texas upset Nebraska in their bowl game with that fourth and one bootleg. Those were the two best teams, you know, rather than Florida State and Tennessee. I don't want to slight Florida State and Tennessee, so I don't see a 2020, okay? But that was a great, those are two great football teams. We ended up third in the country, but that was a national championship level team. And um, I've been to six Rose Bowls. I want to get to one with, with the University of Arizona. All right, that's our time. Thanks, Dwayne. Hey, appreciate thank you guys. Coach. Appreciate, appreciate the time. Sorry about getting emotional. No, but thank you. I love it. I love it, Coach. Thank you. Thank you guys. What's your name? Troy. Troy.